Mary Jane, good afternoon. Welcome to About That Time. Uh, it's a beautiful Friday. We have a very special guest. My name is Noah Rubin. I'm editor-in-chief of Mary Jane. We have Protégé in the building. If you guys don't know about Protégé, he's one of the most important artists in Jamaica today. He just dropped a new album, A Matter of Time. He's chilling with us here on About That Time. Protégé, thank you so much for coming through, sir. Hey, no respect. It's a joy to be here in this hot ass day in LA, but we love the weather, we love LA, we love the vibes. It gets hot, man. That's yeah. how it is in LA. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have good times in LA when you come out here? Love it, love it, love love the time in LA. Um, um, lots of friends out here that I hang out with. I just love the vibe, it's, it's like, a, it has a Jamaica vibe to it, you know what I mean? Yeah, got some palm trees, got some sunshine, got yeah. some chill, chill people. Yeah, no doubt. That's how that's how we do it out here in LA. So, what are, are there any things that you like always like to do when you're out here? Is there places you like to eat? Are there spots you like to check out? I like to just check out all the all the vegan spots. Lots of options. Huh? There's so many options. So I just pick out on on um, everything. I went to Vegan Glory. I went to a, a vegan pizza place. Um, lots of nice places. Um, Protege's vegan eating guide to LA. I could do something. Maybe we have a show. We should, we, <laughs> we, should, we, should, we, should, we should do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. So what are your, what are your vegan dishes then? What are, what are the things where you're like, oh, I'm getting to LA. I'm going to be able to eat this. this oh, is amazing. the first thing I always get is like a vegan beef jerky. Vegan beef jerky? Yeah. I didn't even know that existed. Bro, listen, that will change your whole life, bro. Vegan that, beef jerky. That will change your whole life. So good? So good. Now, is that something that's packaged or they make it fresh? Like, nah, it's fresh. Or you go in the restaurant and you get it and it's like really crunchy and... Wow, it's to die vegan for. beef jerky, number one on the list. Yeah, actually, Jamile, you should um, see what vegan places are close here so when we leave here, we can go get our last meal before we touch the plane. The only thing better than lunch, guys, is vegan lunch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Simply Wholesome, we're going to give a shout out to Simply Wholesome. They're just down the street. They have wonderful vegan options. There's plenty of plenty of good stuff happening there. That might be the lead paper. I don't think that's an actual paper. The next paper is the paper. I'm like, bro. There you go. Yeah, that's just <laughs> for the packaging. Paper, like, yo, <laughs> that's gonna be. That's like... gonna smoke pretty thick. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to Simply Wholesome. I got. I went to Simply Wholesome. I eat lunch there. I got some glasses. I got actually got these glasses at the vegan at the vegan restaurant. What do you think? It's cool. It's fresh. Yeah. You know, I, I, is, there, is everything orange through your eyes now? Everything is orange through my eyes, guys. Keeping it positive, stimulating my chakras. You know, yeah. making good shit happen at about that time. That's what yeah. we do. So are you in the midst of a, a tour supporting this new record. Am I wrong? Yeah, well, no, you're not wrong. I just finished playing um, Hollywood Bowl in LA. My first time playing Hollywood Bowl. So That's major. It's a good look, you know what I mean? And um, um, I go home to Jamaica today. I land tomorrow morning. And then I keep an album launch with um, New Wave Jamaica. That's a... That's a um, what you call it now, uh, a platform in Jamaica that does just lots of dope creative, creative stuff. So go follow New Wave Jamaica. New Wave Jamaica, Yeah, and follow then it I, up. I go home and I do that and then I leave the next day, go to New York and then I'm in Europe for six weeks touring. So that's the bunch of, and then when I'm done touring for six weeks in Europe, I come back to California and do a California tour. So I'll play LA, I have San Francisco, San Diego with Lauren Hill, um, enough, enough things are going, you understand? Enough things are going. Yeah, it way. sounds amazing. Now, do you like touring Europe? Are the vegan options as good as LA? Hell no. There's, no, I like touring Europe, but their, 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 their vegan options are low. Especially when you go to a place like Germany, like I just beer, sausage, and beef, then people they want to deal with you. Crazy beer, sausage. Beer, 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 sausage, beer, bread. Bread, as I'm saying, <laughs> bread. And tough bread too, you know. Yeah. Like your jaw have to be in a good shape. Yeah, your absolutely. Your teeth have to be sharp for, the, for you that dislo- bread. accidentally dislocate your jaw just chewing on some German bread. Yo, it's crazy, but I love, I love, um, I love touring in Europe though. The energy is lit, especially Germany. People don't even th- understand. Like when I go to Germany, bro, it's lit. Like crowd, it's crazy. They know all the music. Um, Real lovers of good music uh, it's out there in Germany. It's intense. Let's check in with our uh, Instagram friends. Uh, Maggie Chico, hello from Ecuador. Shout out to all our Ecuadorian friends. Great, yeah. great country. Yeah, I've never been there. I, I see my photographer friend from Hawaii just commented. Big up yourself, um, lady. Um, yeah. Weed Club, Jamaica, that's accurate. Yeah, yeah. Can't yeah, argue yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. 
check out the borough market for vegan options. Borough market. We just got a vegan food tip from our Instagram audience. Guys, thank you for the vegan food tips. Keep them coming. We, we don't mind. Now, protege, we like to do a thing on about that time. We like to learn a little bit more about you. We take some pictures from your Instagram and you tell us the story behind it. Is that cool? Nice. This is a really dope um, show as well, guys. Like, thanks dope. for inviting me Dope here. show, it's guys. Really nice. About that time. It is our pleasure to have you here, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through. Yeah. Uh, we have a picture from your Instagram. Just tell us the story about it. So yeah. you, and a, you and a lady. Oh, damn. That's, um, I have the sweater on as well that she has on. That's my um, girl and um, the mother of my child. That's us in a dope hotel in Miami. Um, just giving her a vacation. We were just there hanging out. I think we look quite fly. Those are my new Jordans I have. I, I just started wearing sneakers. Okay. I didn't used to wear sneakers, so I got those Jordans. And um, yeah, we're just in the hotel. She's like, yo, let's take a picture before we go in the elevator. So that's that. Uh, now Miami, is that a choice vacation destination on your list? No, it's just close. I think we had a, a family wedding and we sent the baby home with okay. the grandparents and we just took three days in Miami. And oh, that's very nice. Did no, the damn thing. I'm, also, I'm sure if she's watching, she's like going to be loving this because she likes to get featured, you know. Oh yeah. Well, she's getting a <laughs> shout out here. She's getting a nice flick on about that time. What yeah. inspired your move to sneakers? Um, my feet on stage. I keep getting hurt because I dance and stage. I jump up and down a lot. I, um, I'm very active, so like my, my shin and my ankles were hurting me. So everybody on my team was like, yo, go get sneakers. You have to take care of your feet. But obviously, you know, man's need to still be fly. 100%. So I had to go and try to find something that would match my personality. There you go. Sneaker hunting. Yeah. Exploring it. It's worth it. Okay, here's another picture from your Instagram. It's kind of a, got a blue blue vibe here, chilling with the homie. Tell us what's going on in this picture. Oh, this is a picture with me and Chronix, who is like one of the best artists in reggae music right now. Me and him do a lot of work. He's on two songs on my album. And this night, um, photographer Kosi did the shot. Um, um, and it's just old film. I don't know what he used for it, but it's like... A film that he developed and um, we're in studio recording. Big up to Chronix. He has an album out as well called Chronology. And um, those are very, very dope artists. Shout out to Chronix Every about time. that time. Every time. Show as a fan. Yeah. All right, here's another picture. Speaking of doing big things, speaking of looking great, uh, I believe this is you on stage at a concert. People always say how weird I am with my memory. So I can remember everything. That must have been years ago. But well, that's in Fresno, California. And I'm on tour with a band called Revolution from California when I did that show. And that's, that's me having a Herschel bag on my back. I got a Herschel gift and they gave me a bag. And this is me coming off stage now and just saluting them. And I play Fresno again in September as well. Fresno, fans of the movement. Fresno, is it Fresno? Fresno, you okay. got it, man. I'm like Fresno. No, Fre <laughs> Fresno is good, but Fresno is also good. Fresno, I'm sure, appreciates the love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, you got a hot Herschel bag look. I think this one you got another tight Woo! look in this picture. What's up with that? Ooh, that's it's the murdering clean, out here. That's the clean suit. That's the clean fit. That's the clean fit. I, I love that. Um, I love that. What do you call it? No, that suit. So I got invited by David Rodigan to, to play his um, 40th anniversary show at Royal Albert Hall in, um, in UK, which is like epic and he he, <laughs> he asked me to come and um, do the show but he's a he's a 40 years he's a legend but he's known for his suits so I was like I'm not showing up to his show and not be fresh so like right before I went I went to the mall went to suit supply I was in there picking my fit they fixed it up for me I got fitted I got a new Clarks you know what I mean if you look on the accents you know the gray shirt with the gray um, hat matching with the clear frames, with little gold and little accents. Um, I mean, Fashion, Week's need, Fashion Week needs to call, bro. I'm saying. Like, like hit me up. Let me, let me pull up. I think they might be intimidated at this let point. Let me pull up Virgil. Like, get, get Virgil on the phone and tell him that I'm, I'm on the way. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm bringing <laughs> my white suit. So y'all yeah. better take your meds. All yeah, right, yeah, here's, yeah. here's a more personal photograph. Uh, I believe uh, you... 
hanging out, having, uh, a, having me a lovely and the little rest. Buddha. She looks like a little Buddha right there. I can't argue with that. Uh, that's my daughter. She's 10 months old now. That was like three months old. There's nothing like um, um, a dad to her daughter. So she's like always super happy. I need to light this up. She's always super happy when I'm around. I get to see her tomorrow. So I'm very, very joyful. Her name is Yara. And um, she's just dope. It's amazing. Oh, what, is, uh, what is one of the biggest changes you've experienced since you became a father? Um, sleep. <laughs> you know, everyone loves to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to a screaming baby. You know? There's nothing like that. Sounds like, like that. a party. It's crazy. It's lit. Well, you got to stay snoozing. But you, know, but you know what? In all seriousness, it makes you appreciate things more. I love people more since she's been born because you get to see that... Um, you know, everybody, you started out just being a little child, just wanting love and affection. And the, the world makes us hard and makes our exterior tough and makes us trust people less and do this, whatever. But like at that, at that stage, it's just pure. She just loves and everybody who comes to her, she wants to hug and um, is, is, is a, it's a thing that makes you appreciate people more. Absolutely. Yeah, hey, Instagram, what's going on here is that we're at Mary Jane. Um, magazine, um, whatever, multimedia, <laughs> multimedia, and uh, we're doing an interview, we're in LA, and um, we're just doing a live, so that's what you guys are a part of, that's why I can't pay you all full attention and talk to you as much, but we're here, New Wave JA just in the house, yeah. Yeah, right. thanks for checking in guys. Here's yeah. another uh, family picture, I believe. Ooh, that's my mom with the sauce. That's my mom from 1973. Um, that's her Afro. Her Afro is legendary in reggae music. She had one of the biggest um, reggae songs in reggae history called Breakfast in Bed. It's huge. I, I have some big hits, but I don't think I have... I think Who Knows might... I don't know, Mom. I think Who Knows might, be, <laughs> might have surpassed Breakfast in Bed, but I'm not sure because that song has been a hit for 30 years, so yep. I still have work to do, but... Um, my mom supports me. She's my manager as well. She's on my team. She runs my company. And um, she's a throwback, man. She's just awesome. That's Classic, amazing. Classical voice. She kind of changed the way people sing in Jamaica. She doesn't get the credit, but I'm her revenge. So <laughs> I take all the credit and give it to her. I like that. Now, when you were growing up, being in a musical family, did you know right away that that was something you wanted to do? Mm. Yeah, I mean... They'll tell me stories of being like nine years old with headphones in front of the mirror. My dad said he would do it. He would like come home and not tell me he's home. And he'd be looking through the wind and I'll be in front of the mirror and I'll be dancing and like doing stuff. And that's how he said he knew that I'd love stage, you know? Yeah. And then when I got good at it, when I was at school, because you don't know you're great at something until like you're at school or something and then everybody's like, yo, you're dope or you know, sing that again or do this or do that. And um, you're like, I guess I must be good because why would people like come to me every time? So once I knew that and then once I found out about work and being in an office and that's what life was going to be, I was like, I have to find a way out. Yeah. And music was the way out because I never wanted to have a strict job. You know, like how you have a job here, but it's like, obviously it's hard and it's tricky, but you get to like be doing stuff like this than Correct. just being like... Sitting and, there. Yeah, I need to move. So I had to do something that I wouldn't get a, a, a real job. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of hard work, though, there's still hard work when it comes to making mm. music. I think this next picture we pulled out, th there's real work that goes into this. Am I right? Bro, like, I'm going to be addicted to doing... Inter Every time I do an interview, I'm going to be like, where are the Instagram pictures for <laughs> me to talk about? <laughs> This is, um, this picture is me and King Jami, who is one of the most legendary figures in Jamaican music. He's from the 70s and 80s, just a super legend, like, to even, I'd never thought in a million years I'd meet him, you know what I mean? And this was when he, he wanted me to record something for a project with Dennis Brown, and, um, Also a legend. I mean, yeah. And uh, I went there and did it, and I did one take of it. And I thought I was like getting ready to be warmed up. And he was like, all right, we're done here. And I'm like, I, I'm, 
this one take, I just went through it one time. He's like, he said to me, the first cut is the deepest. And then I just came out the studio. And this is just us chilling out there, hanging out. Amazing. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Is there anyone else that you've collaborated with uh, in your career that really impacted you the way this session did? Um, it's hard to see. He's one of the most legendary people I've ever been in the studio with because I do mostly in-house production on my team. Yeah. You know, so I don't get to... But um, um, Danny Basie, my bass player who tours with me, he's, one, he's a legend, one of the most accomplished bass players in reggae music history. And when I approached him to tour, nobody thought he would tour with me. Because like, I'm a young artist, he's like a legend, he plays for the, gr the greatest of all times, with Gregory Isaacs, all those people, and um, Garnet Silk, everybody. And um, I just hit him up and was like, yo, I'd love for you to tour with me. And he's like, yo, I love what you're doing. I love your music. And up to this day, he tours with me. So I have a le living, breathing legend that comes on stage with me every time. So Amazing. I'm never, never nervous on stage. Very cool. Uh, speaking of being on stage, there's one more that we wanted you to give us a little backstory on. Here's another live flick from you. What's going on in this picture? Um, I'm at Boomtown Festival in the UK which is one of the biggest festivals. As you can see, the crowd there, it's, it's, um, it's awesome. I have a Scrap jacket on. Scrap is a brand from um, Japan. I'm gonna do a, a tour with in September as well. And um, Scrap is a brand from Japan and they, they always send me cool stuff. So big up Scrap, big up Mai. Mai always getting me the um, cool new music. I mean, cool new gear. And this is us, this is me just performing and living my life, looking out and thousands and thousands of people saying, um, you know, like, whoa, like, this, this, this is really me, this is really me doing this right now. It's crazy to even think where I'm coming from when I see, see something like that. Yeah, that's a lot of people, a lot of love right there. Mm -hmm. um, well, I appreciate your sharing the backstory. That was our, our unnamed Instagram segment. Um, we also do something here uh, on About That Time, we call Roll the News. We talk, cannabis is making waves around the world. Um, yeah. Cannabis is catching headlines. Uh, and we pull some headlines from MaryJane.com yeah. uh, and we talk about it. Now tell us what the, what's the story with legal cannabis in Jamaica? Have things been changing fast there? Not fast, but it's been changing. So right now it's very, very lax. Like you can actually buy um, legally in Jamaica now. There's a store called Kaya. That's the first store in Jamaica that has done that. And um, um, police don't hustle you as much anymore. You know what I mean? It's like chill, but you can only have two ounces okay. on you at time, and you can grow five trees. Okay. So it's better than people being persecuted for that kind of stuff as was anything happening before. That, anything that, anything that, um, oh, did you guys end? It's cool. But we're still on Facebook. Okay. Yep. Um, the, the, so did we just end suddenly like that? No, no, it's we're cool, we're cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, um I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about cannabis in uh, Jamaica and the yeah. fact that people are not being as uh, From you know I go much. jail, from you know I go jail or nothing for them thing there, then it better. Yeah. Cause it's stupid, bro. Like we're in where it's twenty eighteen. Right? It's twenty eighteen in the year of our Lord. And <laughs> and People are still aggy about weed. Absolutely. It's crazy to me. I was like, it's, it's beyond me. It's yeah. beyond me. It's beyond me. When, when we can see all the good that can happen, you know, people will say, oh, well, some people react differently. But I mean, some people react differently to everything. And then everything is within reason and within balance, right? And we as people have to be able to regulate ourselves. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you, can't just, you can't just take something like this and say it's legal. It's a plant, for Christ's sakes. If you put a seed in the dirt, it grows. How are you going to... There's no processing. There's no anything. Why are you going to be... It's, I can't believe we're still having this conversation, though. You know what I mean? Like, under real. Agreed. And it's an economic opportunity, I think, for a lot of people in a lot of places. And that brings us to our first story on tonight's installment of Roll the News. Uh, Nevada has sold $340 million worth of legal, legal weed. Uh, they had estimated um, something much lower, uh, but this uh, statistic kind of shows that in a place like Nevada, there's actually people wanting to buy this stuff. And everywhere, 
in everywhere. There's so many people that smoke that um, don't want to be stigmatized, so they don't even show it, but everywhere. And um, can you imagine the industry? And sometimes I wonder, like a country like Jamaica, and like what things are United States imposing on them that I don't know about that makes it hard for them to legalize because you never know with the geopolitics, you don't know what's happening. You know what I mean? And like say, if Jamaica legalizes fully and whatever, and like say, America isn't legalized fully, what does that mean for Jamaica? Especially when Jamaica kind of relies on America for, not even relies on them, but it's like, you're, we're very close. Yep. So it kind of, you'd be like, hmm, maybe we don't. So it's very touch and go still, but, um, and then America is confusing, bro. Like I'll be driving, I'll have crazy weed with me and I'm in California and it's, what well, should I say that I have you know, some, <laughs> not, not a lot. The right amount some. for personal consumption. I have the right amount for personal consumption. Yeah, there you go. And I'm driving, right? But then if you're going, driving into another state, you have to get rid of it because they say if you're driving across a state border, it's not legally, f federally, but it's, it's confusing. So you have to kind of know what you're doing. I'm like, all right, what state am I in? Like, can I do it here? Or, it's tricky. It's very tricky. It does. It gets tricky, but things get legal, and then people sell a lot of it in the yeah. legal market. Yeah. And I heard that um, then, um, Colorado is doing well as, and Washington, they're all experiencing great um, impact. You know, impact. Yeah. Well, Nevada, you're making money. What's new? People, weed, weed and gambling. You, do, you, do you gamble? What do you think? Weed and gambling. That's probably not the best combination, right? I think it's better than alcohol and gambling. Because maybe you're smoking and be like, shit, I don't want to lose that much more money. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I gambled once when I went to Vegas and I was winning and I had, I, I started with 50 bucks and I was a thousand dollars. Wow. At the um, roulette table. That's a good run. It was a good run until it wasn't a good run. And then I left with zero dollars. <laughs> well, and I said I would never gamble again because <laughs> I hate losing money more than I love winning money. Hmm. That's well, that's well put. Yeah. Words to live by. All right, we have another story from Roll the News. Um, tonight, we have news out of Canada as well. Uh, Edmonton, the city of Edmonton in Canada, may be the first city to allow pot smoking in public. What do you think about, uh, about smoking in public being legal? Yeah, well, it's funny because like, I'm from Jamaica where it's not legal, but it's legal. Like, you go to any party, any dance in Jamaica, you're smoking in public. Like, you're out on the street, you're smoking in public. So I grew up smoking in public, so to me it's natural. You know what I mean, I don't know it any other way. There was never, apart from that, it was illegal, but it's soft illegal in terms of ain't nobody at a party coming and saying nothing to you about smoking weed. So for me, I just thought that's the way it kind of was. But, so I don't see anything, like I grew up like that. Makes sense. Canada's just catching up yeah. with what actually makes sense. Yeah. Well, the thing is, with a lot of the legalization that's happening around the world, uh, this public smoking thing is an issue. People don't automatically uh, associate the two. I mean, they're look, trying to look at it like beer, and they've done a lot of uh, work to make sure people aren't drinking all the time on the streets. And so now they're kind of treating uh, cannabis the same way, but the, I don't know whether that's a good parallel. I don't know, but marijuana is a, is a smell, you know, man. When you light up a spliff, you know, brother, like the whole place smell that, you know. That's true. So it can be a bit off-putting to some people. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like if you're in a hotel and you're smoking, the whole floor knows you're smoking. That's true. And some people may not want to be on that. Yeah. And uh, obviously there's no smoking in rooms, but I mean, it's like, you're out on the street and you're smoking and like some kid is smelling like, what the hell is that smell? You know, it, it's tricky, but that's how we grow. In Jamaica, like everybody know weed, everybody smokes. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. Well, Edmonton, shout out to you. You're catching up. You're doing, doing good things. And, you know, it would be cool to have a city where you could just roll around and smoke a joint. Because at this point in time, there isn't anyone who's quite fi figured that out. So okay. you can't just smoke outside in California? No, technically not. Public consumption is illegal. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. I think I need a, I think I need like a, a book with some of the rules. Sometimes we need a book with the rules. It's hard to figure it out, uh, especially when you're used to smoking in, a, in one way. Uh, we have a third story uh, on tonight's installment of uh, Roll the News. Gwyneth Paltrow, her Goop brand, uh, is about to have a cannabis line. 
So Gwyneth Paltrow is, a, I would say, a pretty, pretty big celebrity. She's getting into the cannabis game. Uh, what do you think of that? I like Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, I think she's dope. And I think more people in her status that come out and do stuff like this um, will help to change the perception of um, marijuana. Yeah. Well, it's a big change. Gwyneth Paltrow, welcome to the party. Uh, Goop, her brand, uh, does some cool things. So we're excited to see um, what kind of stuff she has rolling out. Um, now, we like to make sure that uh, we give uh, props to our friends. Uh, our Roll the News segment is sponsored by Mez. These are some vape pens that are available in Colorado and California very soon. Uh, kind of cool, different, different vibes. Do you ever go with a vaporizer? Yeah, I have one in my pocket. Yeah, it's a it's a good lifestyle. Mez makes some dope stuff. We we actually have one for you that oh. we'll give you. Dope, dope, um, dope. But we like to give them a shout out because they help us out here in about that time. Uh, oh, yes. Now we've we've kind of got to know you. We've we've covered some major headlines around the world. We also like to make sure that we get, uh, you know, a little bit more mystical. Um, we do something we call astrology time. So we do your horoscope. Mm-hmm. And we ask you some questions from your horoscope. We're just pulling, we're pulling sentences from your horoscope. You just tell us if you think it's accurate or not. Um, I, I, like to, I like to take a little bong hit when we go into astrology time. Could I borrow that later? Let's do it. I haven't used a bong in like... In Jamaica, we use a steam chalice. Have you ever steamed? Yeah. I've so, never steamed, but I, I'm familiar. That's the wave. Okay, so, so you're just going to light it, and then when you want to pull it, just push this that down. Oh, this is some high-tech stuff, bro. Guys, we are, we are in the future, smoking a futuristic bong from Jet Water Filtration Systems. They're our homies. They hooked us up. You don't pull that down. Let it fill, and then pull it down. So yeah. leave it up. Yep. There you go. And then when you're ready to really take it, you push that down. There you go. Guys, I do not have a steam chalice on about that time. I think it's a violation. We should get a steam chalice, don't you think? Mm, yeah. Steam chalice is a pretty smooth way to smoke, right? It's the best. Yeah. Natural. Coconut shells for the flames. It's nice. Guys, we don't have a steam chalice here. If you'd like to send us one, Feel free. We'll, we'll try it out. We'll let you know what we think. Um, so <coughs> here we are. We're in astrology time. Yeah. We did your horoscope. These are a couple of things. People, you know, the, I don't know. Do you, do you follow your horoscope at all? I hear things. Do you, what do you think about it? Are you like, eh? Some people get obsessed with it, you know? I think there's something there, but I think I don't fully understand it, but there's something there. Okay. Well, these are some things we pulled from your horoscope. That they said this was accurate. You tell us whether you think it's on point or not. Um, he likes to travel. I mean, that's, that's pretty general, I'd say. It's hard, it's hard to say that's inaccurate. You can say that pretty much about anyone, right? Yeah, I like to. Yeah. I travel a lot. Travel a lot around yeah. the world. European tours, yeah. Miami. Africa. Chilling in Japan, LA. Japan, LA, everything. Guys, the world has a lot of love. You yeah. gotta travel sometimes to get there. Okay, here's another one from your horoscope. Uh, he always picks himself up after a setback. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think I have a period where I snap, then I, I, um, I calm down, and then I get resolve, and then my dad always tell me, bounce back, kid, bounce back, bounce back. From I was a, because I take stuff so hard and be like, you know, bounce back, you know, like, shake it off, like, continue, and I always keep that in my, in my mind. Well, there you go. I think the horoscope might have, might have been pretty accurate on that one. Okay, here's another one. It says, sometimes you can get into a shady situation uh, from t trusting too much. Mm. I'm not sure because I think I'm very skeptical and I'm very careful about trusting people. Triple checking. Yeah, and um, I... I don't think I've had too many situations where somebody that I really trusted has put me in a shady situation. It's always people who I kind of suspect that something ain't up. But I'm very grateful for that people that I trust, I can feel um, 
you know, so far so good. Okay, so far so good. So maybe the horoscope isn't quite, quite right on that one. Okay, we have one more from Astrology Time. Uh, he likes sports and the outdoor life. Are you, are you a sportsman? I'm a sports fan for sure, um, and I love, I don't know what you mean by outdoor life, but I definitely like being outside. And Nature. I like just moving, and um, I like to jog, I like to go to the beach, um, and I love sports. I, I'm a huge um, sports fan, so I know my sports knowledge is like very, very high. Are you into soccer? Are you following the World Cup right now? Yeah, but we'll call it football. Football. Sorry, yeah. guys. We have a global audience here. We're going to call it football today. Yeah, yeah. It means soccer in, in other languages. Um, okay, so have you been following the World Cup? What do you think of this year's World Cup? I think it's exciting because I think a lot of the teams that people expect, like Brazil is gone home, Argentina gone home, Portugal gone home, Italy, Netherlands didn't even make it. Champions. Um, it's like Germany gone home. Germany gone home. And those are the biggest footballing nations, and it's like, the game has changed. The world is catching up to everybody. Um, it's exciting. Like it's anything really exciting. can happen. Like, it's really exciting. You know, so. Yeah, it's been a, a topsy-turvy World Cup. Yeah. Um, even today, this morning, was uh, a couple really interesting matches. Yeah. Um, do you find yourself uh, looking forward to the World Cup? Are people in, in Jamaica really uh, excited by it? <laughs> you have no idea. I, I, I guarantee, this is a guarantee I can give you for sure without fear of anybody saying anything. Um, there's no country that doesn't have a team in the World Cup that's more into the World Cup than Jamaica. They just love it. There's nobody that's, that's, that doesn't have a team in there. Like, bro, when Brazil won their last match, there was like a parade <laughs> of people with Brazilian flags, and they're not Brazilians. Those are, those are Jamaican people. There's like people out in the streets, like, celebration and I'm like first of all they didn't even win the World Cup and secondly it's <laughs> Brazil like we're not even Brazil <laughs> it's crazy man. it's crazy what are what are some other teams that get a lot of love in Jamaica um, Germany Brazil Argentina um, the South American teams you know and um, but not that Germany is one but Germany as well and what about England England look like they might get some love this year they look like they're getting some love. Yeah, but, they're, you know, they're still in it. And listen, the, more, the further they go, is the more love they'll get. <laughs> <laughs> like, they'll be in the final and you'll be like, lots of love coming. You know what I mean? It just depends. Yeah. Fair enough. That's how, that's how the sports does, does it to all of us. All right, well, that was astrology time. I think the horoscope had, had some moments. It was yeah, pre yeah, pretty sure. important. I wouldn't say it was 100%, but I think, it, I think it did a pretty good, good job. Now, here at about that time, we're extremely thankful for your time, for you coming through. We wanted to make sure that we give you a chance to let the folks know what they should be checking for uh, on the horizon for the rest of this year. Um, well, the album came out last week. It's called A Matter of Time, so it's seven days old now. And um, it's just a, it's, 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 it's an interesting listen. It's not what you think reggae music is. And that's what like artists like myself are doing with music coming out of Jamaica now, changing the parameters of what it means to be a Jamaican artist. So you'll just hear those dope beats and tough lyrics, mad flows, you know what I mean? Like I grew up on hip hop. That's what, that's what my whole thing was growing up, like just loving hip hop music and patterns and flows and metaphors and the way how the lyrics went together. And then being from Jamaica now, loving, like a different type of beat, but then loving boom bap and like incorporating just both of the sounds because hip hop and reggae has like a, a crazy legacy, you know what I mean? Like lots of hip hop come from original reggae. So it's like, it's a vibes, you know what I mean? I, I'm just an artist, a Jamaican artist, not even to be labeled as just a reggae artist, it's just a Jamaican artist, but reggae is at the core of what I do. So check out that album though, it's fresh. It's out now, and then I'm back in LA, I'm back in California to do a California tour in September. So, uh, and I'm also a part of the Lauren Hill, Miss Lauren Hill tour. So I do Vegas with her, and I do San Diego with her. So yeah, my debut, and uh, let's go and check out the thing on all of the platform then. Absolutely, guys. Uh, Protege has a lot coming this year. Make sure you check him out in a city near you. Check out his music. Uh, thank you guys so much again for checking in on about that time and we'll see you very soon.